Everybody, how are you? Can you hear me? Hi, Gary. Um, thank you for sending me that MP3 uh, Hildegard. So today I am going to channel Hildegard von Bingham. And if you're not familiar with her, basically she's a Catholic saint. She was canonized in 2012 you know, which is, you know, eight or 900 years after she lived. I guess she lived in the 1100s. So a long time after she had passed, she was canonized by the Catholic Church. And she was a nun in Germany called the Rhineland at that time. And she came from a noble family. But when she was young, she went away to live with another woman. I guess she was the 10th child of her parents and they sent her away to live with uh, um, a woman who was just a little bit older than she was. And both of them entered the <clears throat> monastic life at the same time. So she became a nun at a Benedictine monastery. And I guess it was common for nuns to be cloistered at monasteries. So there were both men monks living there and nuns. But Hildegard is very famous because she was a prophet. She had visions um, and she wrote about these visions. And some of these visions had to do with the end of the world. Um, and some of these visions had to do with other things. But hey, Gary. Um, but essentially, not only was she a prophet, she was an abbess. She was in charge of the nunnery where she lived. And eventually she left the Benedictine monastery and started her own nunnery. And she was the head of that. She founded it. She had the buildings built and she uh, was the head of that institution. And she wrote books on uh, medicine plants, flora, and fauna. She wrote books on philosophy and um, theology. And she was very, very um, outspoken about the corruption in the Catholic Church and was not afraid to make her views known. And she did have correspondence with the Pope and different uh, 
people in authority, the bishops, maybe the emperor, I'm not sure. But essentially, she was like uh, very, very active, very prolific, and very established in many different fields. And this was in the 1100s in very early medieval Europe. And the fact that she was a woman doing all of this was really unheard of. I mean, just did not happen. I am not even sure um, how she was so accepted by everyone around her. Maybe it was her sh sheer will and determination. But she even preached publicly, not in front of lay people, but in front of the clergy, and women were not allowed to do that. So she kind of bent all the rules. She didn't bend them. She just ignored them and did whatever she wanted. So <laughs> I think that's pretty interesting. Oh, okay, so Gary says that she was living from 1098 to 1179. So she was she had an old, she lived a long time, especially for that time period. So she died at the age of 81. Um, no, ma no matter, she had um, much, much, much influence at that time. She was well known. She was famous. And last but not least, she was a great composer and a great musician. And her music was... Uh, it was not known for many, many years. It just got rediscovered in the latter part of the last century. So her music has come back to us. I think it was popular at the time, but um, it just disappeared. I don't know exactly what happened. But anyhow, her correspondence, her writings, her music is all coming back. And I would say she's probably the most famous saint of medieval Europe, you could argue that. But anyhow, I thought it would be fun to channel her today and see what she has to say about anything, really, our time and her experience and her time, whatever she would like to talk about. Because she was such a forward thinker, very prolific, uh, very well known, and uh, very highly recognized. She had a, great, a really strong reputation. So, uh, anyhow, um, I guess we can just start and see what happens, um, bring her in and see what she has to say. So if you will, everybody just relax and take a deep breath. I'm going to grab my selenite to channel with, because I like to channel with it. Okay. And so at this time... I call in my highest and best healing and channeling guides. I call in the Archangels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Ariel, Archangel Gabriel. I call in 10,000 warrior protection angels. I ask them to surround me and everybody watching this video or live stream. If anything's released by anyone here, I ask the angels to take it to source and transmute it into light. Please block all negative entities, energies, and thought forms. I ask that this channeling be overlit by the Divine Mother Goddess of Lemuria. And lastly, I would ask Hildegard von Bingham to come in to our circle today. I ask her to take over my voice and please give a message to the audience. And we're calling you back out of time, although in, we know that there is no time, but we're so thankful that you would like to come through today and that I'm able to channel you today. So without further ado, we're going to bring in Hildegard. Yes, I am here present. This is Hildegard von Bingham. Bingham is where I am from, the land where our 
Abbas, Ab, where I was Abbas, and it was a beautiful land indeed. I am very happy that you have called me in and wanted me to share a message today. I am tickled actually because I have been observing people, individuals rediscovering my work in the last 25 and 30 years. Yes, I have had a resurgence of popularity, but uh, I don't think I have been channeled before. So this is a new experience for me. So thank you. I would like to bring a message to the people today who are right, who are watching this video. You may not know this, but I was a reformer. I called out corruption where, when, and how I saw it. In some ways, my, I was somewhat rigid in my thinking because I really wanted the purity and the sanctity of the church, of the people who worshipped Christ to prevail over all. I had a very deep and consuming relationship with Jesus Christ, and he was my Lord, and he was my Savior, and he still is. Of course, I wanted all to have that relationship with him at that time, and because my relationship was so strong, and really it um, started when I was very young, it saddened me that people at that age, people in the times when I was living, did not really understand who Christ was, what he did for us, and um, they did not feel or see his energy. And even some of the bishops, even some of the hierarchy in the church, I could not feel that they had a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, and this saddened me at the time. And so I went on my own crusade, and of course, this was before the major crusades that happened in Europe at this time, but I went on a crusade to bring that energy, my knowing of this God who I love dearly to those who would listen. And so I was lucky enough to have visions um, in my waking state, sometimes going into dr deep trance states, and I was given knowledge by the divine, by the Christ. The reason why I had so much knowledge about so many subjects at that time was because it was given to me and I was in communion with the spirits, the higher ones who illumined me. And for that, I was deeply grateful. As I was not highly educated, as it was not the custom in those times to educate women, although I could read and write Latin and my vernacular language. Suffice to say that the life that I lived was a beautiful life and it was filled with ecstasy and magic and wonder and beauty and um, my belief was not something that was in my mind, but I utilized my mind to support what was given to me in my heart. And it was very important that I set a good example and be a good role model for the nuns who were under my care and for the people who were in my jurisdiction. But I did have a consuming mind and I wanted to know. I had an intense curiosity about life, about how life worked. And I wanted to understand and know things 
And so this knowledge was given to me through books, through visions, and through osmosis. So my message for you today is when I look back on my life, I can see that I had a strong personality. What I wanted, I usually got because I pushed for it because I felt like I was in the right. I felt like I was always following the divine will and the will of God. And yes, it was true that my will could somewhat run over people who had less tenacity than I did. And when I look back on my life, that is the thing that I would regret most of all, that I enforced my opinions and wills on other people because I felt like I was in the right. And although I was in deep communion with God at that time and nature, um, I think now, looking back on my life, that it would have been good of me to give people this, their time and space to come to the conclusions that they needed to come with, to come to. And so that is what I would judge looking back at my own life, um, where I fell short. However, nothing gave me as much pleasure as composing music. When I would compose the lyrics and music for, uh, and melody for my music, it gave me great joy. I also painted and drew, but when I was composing music, it was a very visceral experience where I became um, ecstatic almost with the melodies of God. These melodies were meant as a divine communion. They represented a divine communion that I had with the Christ and all of that love, all of that beauty and all of the effluence of that relationship is best seen through my music. It gave me great joy and I loved nothing better than to sing the tunes that I wrote and have others sing them with me as well and perform them, which we did in the um, Ab Ab Abbot, Abbot, Abbot. And for that, I am eternally grateful. So yes, it was a very noteworthy lifetime, but what I want to convey to you today is to tell you that you can stand up for yourself, for what you believe in. You can be true to yourself and not offend others or irritate others in the process. In my day, there were martyrs and there were saints and they stood up for what they believed in against all opposition. And sometimes they suffered the greatest penalty, which was death. My advice to you is to be true to yourselves, to stand up for what you believe is correct, but not to um, force, force that opinion on others. If you are in divine relationship with the Christ and you are um, growing in divine knowledge and love, your energy and your presence will be recognized. You will state an example by just living your life in purity and sanctity. 
There is no need to prove anything to anyone. Just live your life as best that you can, standing up for what you believe in, living your morals, and of course, developing your divine relationship with the Creator. It is my wish that everyone should have a divine relationship with their Creator. And one of the things that is lacking in your modern age is that you have gotten so much complexity going on with your technology, with the amount of individuals living on the planet, with all the different types of philosophy coming about, with everybody's viewpoints um, coming about, there is a lot of confusion on your planet right now. My advice to you is to distill the confusion into simple, simple terms, very basic and simple terms. Know your creator. Have a relationship with your creator. Ask for the divine energies to come into your spirit, into your heart, your mind, your soul. And when you open yourself up to this energy, when you open yourself up to divinity, you will become illuminated in body, mind, and spirit. Of course, this was something that was valued when I was alive and the church was valued. It was seen as a very important institution and refining oneself in spirit was seen as a noble goal. Somehow in your world, this is not seen as the noblest goal. And I can assure you that it is the noblest goal of a human life. And so with whatever time you have left, my advice to you is to become one with the divine energies and invoke your creator. When you take a step towards God, when you take a step towards self-realization, you will get many, many steps taken towards you and you will be lifted and lifted and lifted. We were lucky at my time because nature was pure, it was beautiful, and we could see godliness all around us reflected in the natural plants, in the water, in the animals, Unfortunately, this is no longer the case on your planet, but do make an effort to be in the pristine, beautiful nature of God and really imbibe it into your system. And this will connect you um, very quickly and very easily to the divine realities. Also, it is helpful to listen to those who inspire you, whether it is through word, thought, or music. Align with those who you are in concert with and create a beautiful melody. There is much power and much beauty in the collection of voices in a group mentality where all are on the same page. If you can find your people who you um, feel connected to, if you can resonate with their energies, this will also bring you much joy in your life. And so I want to say that, yes, as I passed, I understood that even though my life was dedicated to God and service, I left that world and joined the divine chorus in the higher realms of consciousness where my mind and soul and my heart expanded and I got to learn so much more. And so 
know that life is a journey, that it continues on, and that essentially it is infinite, that you will always be learning and growing and blossoming in the divine energy. So that is my message for you today. I hope that you resonated with it. I send you my deepest love, my deepest heartfelt warmth, and I ask you to call on me or any of the other um, divine um, the divine souls that you are aware of and we are all divine but you have many many resources at your hands you have angels you have light workers you have saints and you have martyrs and we like nothing and yogis and we like nothing better than to serve so please call on us for love, inspiration, friendship, companionship, for knowledge, and we will answer your call. We here love you, and we send you our greatest blessings. Namaste. And now the channel returns. Hi, thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that message today from Hildegard. Thank you, Hildegard, for coming in and um, bringing your energy to us today. And so she says to align with those who are like-minded, to stand up for your belief system without squashing other people. Because if you live in purity and sanctity and align yourself to the divine, there is no need to run ramshot over other people. People will see you for the light that you are. And I totally agree with that. I think that's very good advice. So I just want to say thank you for listening. This is Lemuria and Donna Carroll. And I come to you every week live at 11 o'clock Pacific time, 12 o'clock Mountain time, 1 o'clock Central time, and 2 o'clock Eastern time. And I channel angels, saints, masters, and divine energy. So I'm very grateful uh, that you decided to listen today. And I would ask that you would... Um, Subscribe to this channel, like the video, ask for notifications, if you will. I don't really send out a reminder every week via email because I usually don't know who I'm going to channel until Sunday morning. So, But uh, know that um, you can also request entities for me to channel. So if you would like to hear from a certain individual, you can send me an email at Carroll at gmail.com and request someone to come through. So anyhow, um, I just want to say thank you. Um, the donation button is there if you feel called to donate. And I send you all of my love and light. Thank you. And amen. Take care.